Hello, uh, seventh grade science student. This is Mr. Core, and what I'm going to do is take you through a tutorial uh, on the Creative Graph website. And um, if you're looking here at your first choices, you can see that bar, line, and pie graph are mainly the graphs that you will be using. Area and XY we probably will not use. So just to get things started, I'm going to click on the bar graph uh, to show you the easiest way to set things up. Uh, and then we can play around with the line and pie graph later. Um, the bar graph, when you click on it, it's going to take you to the design tab in which you will see some regular choices right here. To begin, I would keep the direction and the shape of the bars and the style all the same. Then if you want to go back and change the direction and the shape, you can do that. Okay? Just so we know, you can always click through these tabs at any time especially this preview tab where you can see the start of your graph. Now there's nothing on here right now, but as time goes on and you start adding stuff, this will start to fill out. That's the great thing about this website. So again, back to the design tab, you can see that you can change the, the direction, the shape of the bars, and some style picks, but like I said, keep everything the same right now. The next thing you have to do is click on the data tab to check and review your labels, titles, and your data. This is probably the most important um, tab and in, in information that you have to input. Now, the first thing that we do is we add the graph title and the labels on this point. So I came up with some uh, a number of ones that we already used in class. So I'm going to just use those titles to help keep things moving. The title should be very specific to what's going on in the graph and should tell you what actually you know, the data is. The x-axis represents your independent variable. This is the variable that you change or the you manipulate in the experiment. For us, it's going to be the different colors of M&Ms. Everything should also be capitalized when you do this. Next, the y-axis represents your dependent variable. This will go on the up and down or vertical axis on the graph. And for this one, it's the amount of different colors. Now, the source represents who collected the data. In this case, it would be Mr. Cool. For you, it would be your name there. Now, that represents the titles and labels. And if you look in the preview, you should now see title, labels, labels, and source, which is what you need. Now, down below here, this represents your data sets. On this side where it says item, these represent your independent variable items. Now. They have five listed as a default. You can put more there or you can put less, depending on your experiment. But this represents where you'll label your independent variable. This, where it says value, represents where you actually put your dependent variable or your values or your data. This can only be numbers. If you add words here, it will not work. So I'm going to set this up and we'll start again. Okay, now you can see that I've added the colors of the different colors of M&Ms, but we're short one. So what I have to do is change my data set to include six items instead of just five. And I'm going to add my last color here, and then we have six items. Like I said, that can be changed at any time. Also, if I wanted to include the values, now I would write into my values my data. So let's say this. Let's make up some numbers here. And you can see now I've added my values. Now, this is important as well. This is, represents the minimum value and the maximum. Maximum value you should set to on or near your highest value. That way your graph is filled out completely. Uh, right now I have a 45 right here. So I'm going to make my maximum value 50. Now, my lowest value is 6. I recommend always going with 0, 
But if you want to go with six and make that your lowest value, you can do that too. But I recommend that you start with zero and go from there. Now, if I click on preview, I can now see that my data is entered in a bar style graph. Okay. And you can see that they also include the numbers of the exact values on top of it, which is very important as well. Okay. Something else that is nice with the data slot is that I can add more groups than what I just have here. Like if I want to add some different types of M&Ms um, to these groups and compare them, maybe I want to try to take a, a peanut M&M group or a peanut butter M&M group. I can add those here as well and include other groups with presented with the data. And you can see that it's just going to make my data bar smaller and we can make a nice comparison between all of them. But for right now, I'm just going to stick with the one group and I'm going to label that M and M. All right. Now my key shows up right here as well. All right. Now, if I want to make that more specific, I could say number of M&Ms and it shows up there. So the next station you can do, the next tab is dealing with the data labels. You can change the data label. I always recommend that you show it. You can change it to add a prefix or a suffix, meaning if I want to say centimeters, I can put that on there. And there it adds it right there too, which is also important. Um, obviously for this lab, we won't add anything. I could add something before the number to show that. But right now, it's just a, it's a value. I could change it to percent, percent of total. All right, I could do that. And that's going to add percent of the total amount, but we, we don't need to do that. We want to focus on just adding the, the value for it, okay? Um, you can also change the position. Do you want it inside? Do you want it inside the bottom? All right, I could just do this way, all right, which is not, I, I like that way as well. So there's lots of, lots of different options that you can change to what you want to do with the data labels and the font and the font color. Okay, I can change it to anything within here too, all right? And that just, you know, that sort of just customizes what I'm looking for as far as my labels, all right? So this is all well and good. Um, and at this point, we have sort of finished the create a graph part. Now I'm going to show you how to export it. Okay, at this point, I like the way my graph is set up. If I want to, I can go back and maybe, uh, okay, I want to try this horizontal and see how that looks. I could change it like that. That's fine as well. I could change it to, um, you know, vertical, but I want to make my, my shape of them a little bit different. Okay, I could change that as well. I could change it to a cylinder type, type uh, situation. That's fine too. But just remember, um, you know, you might want to change the, 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 the appearance to give it, a, you know, maybe a, a different type of look. That's fine. So that is all up to your customization of how you want to change your graph. But at this point, I like the way it's set. And now I'm going to go to print and save. Now, from your iPads, you obviously will not print. So that's a no. Um, what you're going to do is download as a PDF. And I'm going to get this into the window so you guys can see it. Now... You can use PDF, but I recommend using a PNG or JPEG. When you save it as a JPEG, you download it as an image, all right? Mine's going to download right to my computer, and if I click on it, it's going to show up as a preview, okay? Now, for you guys, you will press and click on the image and save it to your camera roll or copy and paste it into your lab, okay? So again, you're going to go to JPEG, download, and you're going to save it right to your camera roll or copy and paste it into your lab. Okay. Now, if you would like to email this graph, you can do that as well. As an HTML, you can send it to your email. So if you will need to use it on a computer, you can do that. Um, but I, I recommend the easiest step is just to download. But you can do both. A good idea is to down email to yourself just in case you might lose it. 
So, I mean, I could recommend downloading and I also recommend emailing it too. That way you could also put it right into your Google Drive. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.